Sacro is truly a place that challenges all aspects of yourself. Um, it's physically demanding, mentally demanding, but you're never alone. And I think that the camaraderie and teamwork of Synchro is just so important. And so to me, Synchro means family um, that's sustained and it means like dedication, drive, perseverance, and showing us all how to really work hard to achieve our goals. It means, for me in particular, it means family and support because we would always go everywhere with you for all of your competitions. And so for me, that's what sticks out the most. But in terms of the sport in general, it's a lifestyle, it's commitment, and honestly, not something that everybody can do. I feel like it takes a very particular person to want to put that much of their life into a sport. It's such a complex sport with so many moving parts. I mean, 16 people doing the same thing at the same time in sync is super impressive. I started synchro when I was in fifth grade, I want to say. And I started because my coach at the time told me she thought I would like it and introduced me to one of the other skaters who did synchro already. And she kind of showed me you know, what it was. And then I went and I saw an exhibition and with my story, I fell in love with it and wanted to do it. If you ask my mom, it's because I liked the jackets. Um, I like my version better. So then I stuck with it just because, you know, it really becomes a family. And you see these people every week, once or twice a week for hours at a time. You travel together, you stay together in hotels, you compete together. You know everything about each other. And it just is the most amazing family and support system that one could ever ask for. I wish that people knew just how hard the synchro community is trying to get the sport into the Olympics. The fact that it isn't already an Olympic sport can be super disheartening, especially for the athletes that are at that highest level who are putting in all of the work, knowing they likely will never get to go to the Olympics. It's very frustrating. The time commitment was a lot. We had team practice twice a week, sometimes three, once you got up to higher competitive levels. And, you know, it was... 5 a.m. in the morning on Sundays, but Sunday morning, you could commiserate with your fellow teammates about being there at the rink at 5 a.m. And days after school, you would go straight to the rink from school, stay there until 9 p.m., go home and still have homework and have to eat dinner and all that. So it definitely was difficult to balance. I definitely had to sacrifice things for skating. Um, I missed out on going to a lot of parties and hanging out with friends on the weekend for competitions we would have to travel and you know sometimes miss close to a week of school at a time um, and have to stay on top of that. I miss prom because I was at a skating competition but I wouldn't trade anything for that. The experiences I got, the lessons I learned are so valuable to me uh, as I'm growing up and I just there's nothing that can compete with that. It's a really big time commitment. I don't even know how else to describe it. It it takes everything. It really does. <laughs> I'd say about 15 hours a week, I would spend skating or an off-ice practice. Every single day after school when I was younger and couldn't be home alone, I would go to the rink every single day after school, and I would do my homework there for at least, like, two to three hours and then go home and like the next day would be the same thing and on the weekends would be the same thing. I wish people obviously just knew about Synchro. I think if it was televised, if it was publicized, if people knew about it, they would know how amazing and difficult this sport is and how there's nothing else really like it. It is a community of people that support each other endlessly. It's a family of people who love each other endlessly. And it's just very unique. There's a really big difference between being a good skater and being a good synchro skater. Um, there is such thing as having a synchro brain and just having a skater brain. So when you're a good synchro skater, you have insane awareness of everybody else around you and 
exactly what you need to be doing to make elements work. And when you're just skating for yourself, you're skating for yourself. You're only paying attention to what you need to accomplish, not what everybody needs to accomplish. 16 people on the ice doing the same thing. You have to be on time. You have to be completely in sync because the slightest, the slightest off timing, you could have a domino effect of people falling. I was notorious for falling during synchro practice and had a lot of falls. And you know, you're always told if you didn't hit your head, if you didn't break something, you get back up and you get in line as fast as you can. Being able to learn how to push through that and to get through that and to confide in people who are close to me, who will support me and really just get through it and get to the other side was something that I think will benefit me and has benefited me so much in my life. I've learned so many life lessons from Synchro. I always say that I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't done Synchro growing up. I think that it taught me so much about teamwork and really, really getting to know the people on your team and getting to know what strengths you possess, what strengths they have, and learning how to really work in a unified group. I think it taught me how to really work towards a goal and the importance of being goal-driven. Um, that accomplishments and things we want to do, they don't happen overnight. It takes hours and hours of continuous work. And sometimes synchro is not the most instantly gratifying sport. And so I think learning patience and perseverance was just something that I have been able to apply to everything I do in my life. As the years went on and we kept going back to the same places, you'd build memories and traditions in those places. So I think those things would stand out, like in Cape Cod going to the Indian and rubbing the foot. That would always be something that was like a tradition that you did, but I would go with you. And I think that's really cool. The girls that you skate with become more than just like your teammates. They become more like family and really good friends. So I think as an outsider to the actual like skating, those are the memories that stick out the most. I did synchro for so many years and created such amazing memories that it's almost impossible to pick just one of my favorite. But one of them was the first time I was on a team that could make it to nationals. It was 2015, I was on Novice and our theme was cars. We were at our Eastern sectional championships and we were not only the last team of our organization to skate, but also the last team in the Novice division and the last team of the entire competition. Uh, all of our other teams had already qualified for nationals, so there was somewhat of an added expectation we would we would qualify as well. Competing in and of itself is stressful, but I can still remember the nerves I felt before stepping out on the ice. But once we stepped out on the ice, our almost four minute program seemed to start and end in an instant. We skated off the ice and waited in the kiss and cry for what felt like an eternity before we learned we had made third place and were going to nationals for the first time. That competition took place in Lake Placid and we were skating on the 1980 Olympic rink where Miracle on Ice happened. And I often say with my family, with my friends, that a second miracle happened that day because the energy in the air was completely, truly magical. Another moment that I will treasure and hold on to forever was during my senior year of high school. Once again, we were at our Eastern sectional championships and in a position to qualify for nationals. This time I was on the intermediate team and our theme was Rockettes. The intermediate division is known to be one of the most difficult because there are just numerous numbers of teams that are fighting for just four spots to go to nationals. The first time DC Edge Intermediate had made it to nationals, they won, and then it took three years for another team to even qualify for nationals. As an organization, as skaters, we called it the intermediate curse because it just seemed like such an impossible hurdle to overcome. I remember getting on the ice and hearing the audience cheer so incredibly loudly. It got so loud at one point, I couldn't even hear our music as we were skating. But before the program even ended, I was crying because I knew we had just skated our best program of the year. As soon as we hit our end position, I turned and I hugged my best friend and we cried together because we knew that the skate we just put out could potentially be the last time we were ever skating together since we were both seniors. Now I mentioned waiting in the kiss and cry before, but it truly might be the most stressful minute and a half a skater ever has to experience. But it's all worth it when you hear the announcer come on and say, the scores for DCI Intermediate. Listening carefully, we huddled together and we learned that we had made it to nationals. We were so excited, jumping up and down and crying. The only thing we were all saying was, we did it. I can't believe we did it. We broke the intermediate curse. 
I am so incredibly grateful for the memories I made and the experiences I had skating synchro, but I am even more thankful for the family and community I made during my eight years participating in synchronized skating. It is something that was truly unique and that I will hold on to forever.